Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on the derivatives of inverse trig functions. Derivatives of inverse trig functions can be found by using the following property which shows you using the composite function idea how to come up with this derivative or it can be shown using implicit differentiation and that's how we're going to to sort of prove this here is we're going to look at it using implicit differentiation. We are focusing primarily on the three that I've written down below, inverse sine of u, inverse cosine of u, and inverse tangent of u as a function, and so I wrote out those derivatives below. But let's go ahead and take a look at maybe why the derivative of inverse sine x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at a right triangle over here to the right. And if we have a statement like y equals inverse sine x, that is solving for the angle, which means y is my angle inside of the right triangle. And that means x over 1 is the ratio opposite, opposite of y to hypotenuse because it was sine. So then I can use Pythagorean theorem to find the third side or the missing side. So the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared all under the square root. So if we have y equals inverse sine x, let me come over here and write that down. And if I want to not use inverse sine, but rather if I want to think about how could I solve this or rewrite this differently, one of the ways that you could do that is by taking the sine of both sides and sine of inverse sine of x is just x. And so I could write sine of y equals x. And that's also what the inverse function tells us. Okay, so sine of y equals x. Let's go ahead and differentiate this, okay? I want you to think of something really quickly. If we had um, y equals 5x squared, for example, and you were going to find its derivative, we would either write down y prime equals 10x, or we would write derivative of y with respect to x equals 10x. It would be one of those two representations. We are taking the derivative of y. Now, prior to this implicit differentiation idea, Things, the equations were explicitly solved for y, whereas now it might not be when you're dealing with implicit. We just need to include that dy dx. So if I have sine of y equals x, the derivative of sine y would be cosine of y, and I just took the derivative of a y with respect to x. Again, if you haven't gotten to implicit differentiation yet, you will, or you perhaps already learned that. Equals derivative of x was 1. And if I'm solving now for dy dx, right, because I'm trying to find dy dx or slope of a tangent line, things like that, I would divide both sides by cosine y. And now the problem comes, what is cosine of y? Well, take a look at your triangle to the right here. Cosine of y is going to now be the adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? So it's 1 over cosine of y is adjacent, which is square root of 1 minus x squared, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. And we don't need to write over 1 and make it look like it's a complex fraction. We don't need to make this look any more difficult than it already does. So there's me showing that derivative. So if we started with, just to give you a synopsis here, if we started with y equals inverse sine x, the derivative of that is the 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Again, I think it's a little bit more straightforward using implicit differentiation, but one other option, like I said from the beginning, is to do that showing this from above. Okay, so assuming we have or know or have proven these three inverse trig derivatives from above, let's do a couple of examples to find the derivative and simplify. So let's take a look at this number one. Find the derivative and again, simplify where possible. h of x equals x squared times arctangent. So this could have also been written as inverse tangent like so of 7x. So I'm going to use product rule overall. So I'm going to say h prime of x equals 
I'll do the derivative of x squared first, so 2x. And I'll just write down arctan of 7x. You could certainly write inverse tan with the negative 1 or inverse symbol. So arctan of 7x, parentheses or not. Parentheses are typically considered more correct, but a lot of texts don't put them when they're writing arctan. Plus, now I will leave x squared alone. And now here is where I'm doing the derivative of inverse tangent of 7x. So if you noticed from these derivatives up above here, I have a u and then a u prime is in the numerator. So I need to apply that chain rule. So now if I take a look at number one and my u is 7x, that u prime is 7, okay? So I have u prime, which is 7, over 1 plus that argument, or 7x, quantity squared. So then my h prime in maybe, I think what would be the most simplified form, I'm not going to worry about common denominators or anything like that. I'll just write it a little bit better here. So it would just be 7x squared over 1 plus, I'm, I'm going to write that as 49x squared. You certainly could write it as the quantity 7x squared still if you wish. Okay, moving on to number two, I now have an inverse trig function inside of square root, so I'm going to need to apply chain rule, and I'm going to rewrite this as if it's to the one half, so you can kind of see where things are going. And so I have y prime equals, I'll bring down my exponent, keep my base the same, now it's to the negative one half times the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of inverse cosine x, please feel free to reference from above. I don't have it on my screen right now, but please feel free to screenshot or write them down and then use them as reference. So it's a negative, remember all cos are negative, 1 over, because the derivative of my argument, derivative of x is 1, 1 over square root 1 minus that argument, which is x squared. And again, I think that um, this might look a little messy, especially when the negative is sort of in the middle there. So I might do a little rewrite or simplify however you want to look at it. And um, I just really have a negative 1 in the numerator. In the denominator, I will have a 2. I will have a square root of inverse cosine x and times the square root of 1 minus x squared. And I think I took care of everything. The negative, my numerator just has a 1. Yep, square root of inverse cosine x and square root of that. Yep. All right, let's look at an application here. A building that is 225 feet tall, which is labeled here for us, Cast a shadow of various lengths x as the day goes by. An angle of elevation theta, also labeled, is formed by the lines from the top and bottom of the building to the tip of the shadow. Find the rate of change of the angle of elevation, or find d theta dx when x is 272 feet. So this is giving us the rate of change of the angle per foot. You can also study problems similar to this when you get to related rates, and you can study different types of rates of change. For example, I can talk about as the seconds go by within a day, how fast is the angle of elevation changing. I see that this side right here in my right triangle is 225 feet, and I see x is my 272 feet eventually, and there's my theta. So what we should know is that we're going to have to use trigonometry to help us relate that angle measure to side lengths. That's what trig does for us. So I'm going to use tangent because of the opposite and adjacent. Okay, So tangent of theta is opposite, which is 225, and it will always be 225, over, I'm going to say, x. 
If you're putting in the static amount of 272, you now have a problem that is not moving. You're talking about that one moment in time before you even talk about a rate of change, um, you're going to end up with a, a constant for theta instead of a rate of change. So let's talk about this. Leave your x in there because that side length is changing, right, 272, or the x is changing as the day goes by. So 225 is not changing, so we can put that number in right away. So now what I want to talk about is I want to solve for theta. So this is the same thing as saying theta equals inverse tangent of 225 over x, which is also the same thing as saying theta equals inverse tangent of 225 x to the negative 1. So that may be my derivative of that inside piece is a little bit easier, it's just power rule. Okay, so let's do the derivative. This is d theta dx. Just like when we had y equals 5x squared, this was dy dx because it's the derivative of y with respect to x because that's what's on the other side. So the same thing will apply now. Now I have theta, right, so it's d theta and I have x's on the other side. So this is d theta dx equals derivative of inverse tangent of an argument is going to be the derivative of this argument, which is negative 225 x to the negative 2, power rule, over 1 plus this argument squared. Okay, so I'm going to make this look a little bit nicer because you actually have a complex fraction here. Okay, so what I actually have is the, in the numerator, negative 225x to the negative 2 becomes negative 225 over x squared. Then in the denominator, I have that 1 plus, but then I'm going to have to square the 225 and square that x to the negative 1. So it's going to put 225 squared over x squared. And I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by x squared so I can get rid of that complex fraction and make this a little bit easier to calculate with. So it's negative 225 in my numerator and then x squared plus 225 squared in my denominator. Now is when I'm trying to find d theta dx at x equals 272. Now I can put in my x value because this is the rate of change for any x value. So now put in the x value that you want and this is a very small number. It's approximately negative 0.0018. So depending on how many they want you to round to. And theta is radians x is in feet, so this is radians per foot. So it is decreasing at that rate. I hope you found this video on how to find the derivative of inverse functions helpful. Just showed a couple of examples, um, just algebraic functions and then one application. And thanks for watching.